hello. So, um, happy today's Friday, <laughs> theoretically, if you watch them um, in the day that they are aired or published. Today is Friday, and I'm excited that it's Friday. Friday's a good day. But um, some things that I want to make mention before we get into the word today is the face-to-face -face conference with Covenant Love en route or en route. Um, and it is it's just a good time. Last year was the first time that I, I had gone that I went to this conference and it was so powerful, so powerful. But it's face to face and it's at Covenant Love Church in Fayetteville. Um, and it is free, free conference for women. And the guest speaker this year is, oh, you see that? Lisa Bevere. Um, Lisa Bevere, ecstatic um, to get to hear her in person and that she'll be with us for two days. It's March 15th and 16th. Um, and you can register at their website. It's ftfwc.com. So that's face-to-face -face women's conference, ftfwc.com. And it's a free event. There are breakout sessions on that Saturday. And you can choose, there's 12 different sessions you can choose from. I'm so very honored that this year again, Teresa and I get to teach one of the breakout sessions. So um, if there's, but again, there's 12 to choose from and they're all incredible. We sat down to get a, a feel for each other's class and we all want to sit in on all the classes, but of course we can't do that. But there's just some great, um, great things that the Lord's doing and that's going to be a, a fantastic weekend of renewal and encouragement. And so I'm just making that information available to you, but you can register for that. And it's coming up in March again with speaker, uh, author, just powerhouse of God, Lisa Bevere. So, if we are digging back in today, and we're going to pull apart 2 Timothy 3.16 that we looked at yesterday, and I went back and looked at how many things it says that the scripture is for, and it's, it's, it's a lot. And so let's read that verse again, and we'll, we'll begin to break it down today to end our week. It says, every scripture is God-breathed. And remember, we talked about the very life of God, that when God breathed, it was life. He breathed life into mankind, and man became a living spirit, a living being. And then we read in Proverbs 4, where it says, Consent and submit to my sayings, for they are life to those who find them, health and healing to all their flesh. And so every scripture is God-breathed given by his inspiration okay it says that it's profitable for instruction profitable for instruction um for reproof and conviction of sin correction of error discipline in obedience training in righteousness so those are the things that this verse tells us that the word of god is profitable for instruction so first of all profitable what does that mean? Because if to read this in the passage, I would think, oh my goodness, that's just so much. I don't think I can take it all in. And so I want to stop and I really want to delve into this and let the Holy Spirit explain and expound to us what the Word of God is used for. What, what purpose does it serve us? And so it says that it's profitable. Well, profitable is it's beneficial, that it is good for that it leaves you if, if something is profitable for you it leaves you in a better place than you were when you found it um instruction so that's guidance profitable it's good for guidance it's good for instruction um it's going to leave us in a better place than where we started the next one it says is reproof and conviction of sin and so that's what the word of god is used for and I'm just really <laughs> have so many things here that I want to share in that it is it is my job to teach the Word of God. It's my um, my calling to be a teacher, to be a voice, uh, to explain the Word of God, to break down the Word of God. Um, but it is the Holy Spirit, the living Word of God, that brings reproof, um, disapproval, and conviction uh, of sin. And so it's, it's, I'm not the one, it's not my job to convict you of sin. Not at all. My job is to teach the word. Now the word will bring conviction of sin. If our actions, I say our, because we're human, I'm human. <laughs> um, if our actions don't line up with the word of God, it's not the person bringing conviction. It's the word bringing conviction and reproof. Reproof is just disapproval. 
it's disapproval. It's that, you know, if I if I offer reproof, it's that I do not approve, that it is not correct. It's against my belief, against my standards. How are we already at the five minute mark? Um, but reproof or disapproval and the conviction of sin. This was an interesting definition of conviction and we'll end here today. But it was finding a person guilty um, or the act of convincing a person of error. And so, again, I, as I teach the Word, it is the Word's job to convince a person that their actions go against the heart of the Father. Because the heart of the Father, His will, His plans and purposes are right here. And so the Word will do the work. While I give voice to the Word, it is not my place to bring conviction or reproof to other people. But now, when I teach the Word, it will convict people of sin. It will convict. Or it will. It convicts me. It, it. It is that he shows me error in my ways where I need to change a way to match the way of the Father, to match the heart of the Father. And so I'm so thankful that I'm not the one that has to win the loss, that I'm not the one that has to um, show them where they're wrong or show them how to fix it, that the Word does that. The very life of God does that. Isn't that exciting? Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach the Word, and I'm going to let the Word do its work. And so anyway, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you later. Bye.